Hey guys, it's Jace here. Uh, Dan's asked me to bring the midweek word this week. Uh, we think this is a good thing to keep going with, so we want to bring you with some encouragement again this week. And I've got Isaiah, my handsome little man here with me. Uh, he's going to feature for the first little bit. Uh, so I just want to kick off with a bit of a story about him. We were at the dinner table this week and we were talking about people losing their jobs um, and what that means, losing income. Uh, we talked about our jobs are a blessing and they allow you to have food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, things like that. And I should have been paying attention, but uh, Heidi and I were talking about what it might mean for us if that was to happen. And the kids left the table, they were doing their own thing, but as I was listening in the other room, and while we were talking, he came back over to us and he gave me this card. Thanks, bud. You can go now if you want. He gave me this card. It says, To Dad. Dear Dad, I hope you don't lose your job from us. I thought that was lovely. At first, I thought, thanks, mate. That's very kind of you. But as I got thinking, I thought, hang on. And so I called him back over and said, mate, are you worried that I'm going to lose my job? And at first he was okay, but then he started to get a bit teary. He started to well up a bit because he's worried. Dan talked about worry last week, talked about fear and worry being rampant through a time like this. And he reminded us on Sunday that Jesus is in that place with us. He weeps with us. He's not waiting for us to pull our socks up, not waiting for us to just kind of Have a stiff upper upper lip and just kind of think that we're fine because we have God. He knows what we're going through. And as Dan said in his midweek message last week, God offers us to cast those worries onto him, uh, that actually he cares for us, that we can peg them onto him saying, we don't want to deal with this. It's too much. You deal with it. And he's there with us and he lifts that burden. How good is that? I want to come from a slightly different angle today. It's the angle that I spoke with Isaiah about. Uh, We're looking at Matthew 7. It's the end of Jesus talking to his disciples and to a crowd in the Sermon on the Mount. He finishes with these words at the end of it, verses 24 to 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house in the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. It's time to build. Not the building down the road on our property. That would be nice. That's got to wait. It's time to build something even more important. It's time to build our house. This is a time where the rain's coming down, the streams are rising, The winds are beating and blowing. And if our foundation is our job, our income, our things, our health, then we might be in strife. A great crash could be around the corner for us. And so instead, this is a time for us to build a new foundation, a foundation built on rock, on the immovable, unchanging word of God and the God who those words are about. And as we do that, as we build our lives on that sure foundation, we'll stand firm in this storm. For some, this might mean a rebuilding. For some, it might mean examining the current building, a shoring up. For some, it'll be a new work altogether. This is the first time for many of us that our lives have really been challenged to this deepest extent to go, who is our life built upon? What is it built upon? If we're to build upon this, it looks like this. It looks like casting our anxieties onto God because he cares for us. It looks like not worrying because the Lord our God goes with us wherever we go. It looks like not stressing if we have clothes or food or a home or the things that we need because God loves the flowers and he loves the birds and he looks after them and so he's going to look after us. As we seek first his kingdom, he will take care of those other things. This is the foundation that we can build our lives upon. This is the building that we can construct as we open God's word. We're going to have some time to do that. And so I'd encourage you, open it up. It's a slow work, but let's start building. I want to finish just quickly to uh, speaking to the dads out there and the mums, the parents of kids. This is a time where we need to love our kids, to validate what they're feeling, what they're going through, to give them the attention they need because they're listening and they're observing and watching. It's a time where we can show them that they really matter 
that we're here for them, that we can be a rock in their lives, but more importantly, that God is our rock. We can show them that our lives are not built upon our wealth and our health and our job and our things. It's a time where we can show them that our life is built upon something far more firm, far stronger than that. So let's get building.